This is my network problem. I'm going to create VLAN interfaces on the hypervisor, then bridge each of those VLAN interfaces and add them as individual networks to my overcloud nodes. Now what that means is that I won't be using VLAN tagging within the overcloud node configuration and instead we'll just be using multiple flat networks. So I could just use the multi nix VLAN template and just run the deployment and that would be sufficient. But because that's kind of boring, what I want to do is still create my bond. So what we'll do is we will add all the other networks as flat networks, individual networks per interface, and then we will still create our bond for the external network. So the first thing we need to do is create those networks in OpenShift. So if we go back to our terminal, and now we're just going to do OC login. No, we need to export our kubeconfig file, OC login. Login as our admin user. Okay, so we're in the OpenStack project. We do OC get VM. We should see our VMs running there. So what we want to do is take a look at our first thing we want to look at is the network configurations for the node itself. So these node network configuration policies. So so this is our bridge for VLAN 4 and we can see that what we're doing is creating BR4 which is bridge 4, I'm giving it the 4 just to signify that it is on VLAN 4. Uh, we're creating this type Linux bridge and we are setting the port to ENO 2.4. So let's just copy that file. So we will copy this file and we'll call it bridge VLAN and you know what, let's bring up, let's just bring up another connection here. So this is our undercloud node. Let's zoom in on this one. I've been testing with with Mitogen by the way. So we can see here if I use Mitogen, the deployment actually executes in five minutes instead of ten. So we're cutting the time, deployment time in half, but that will be another story for later. So what we want to do is go to our templates directory and we'll have a look at network data v2. So let's just actually grep the VLANs from that file. So we need VLAN 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 created as bridges in our OpenShift environment. So we'll create VLAN 20 and cp.yaml and we'll edit that file. So this one will be BR20. Now this isn't strictly necessary because these VLANs won't happen outside of the cluster. I could just create them all on whatever port and it would work. But if I want them to be able to communicate with the bare metal node, for example, then I need these VLANs configured on my switch. Probably a gateway on my router wouldn't hurt either. But for now, let's just configure them like this, um, and we'll rename the policy so it doesn't override our other one. So it'll be VLAN 20. So we'll do OC create F on that file, and OC get and then CP. So we can see that's being created now. So let's just go ahead and copy that file again. Um, bridge VLAN 20 to bridge VLAN 30. Another file. So basically, we just want to go through and replace all the 20s with 30s. So let's just do it this way 20, 30, okay, that's what we want. Let's see, create dash f on that one. And we will copy it again to 40. Twenties to 40s this time. That one. Copy it again to 50. Uh, hmm. Oh, that didn't work, did it? That didn't work at all. Oh, 
And then the final one will be 60, so we'll copy that file to 60. We'll bring in the file. Let's replace our 20s with 60s. Okay, so we're degraded and CE failing. Oh. Ah, I'd have, I need to create the ports first, so. Before we can bridge the interfaces, we need to create the interfaces. That's why it's failing at the moment. So we'll do VLAN 20 interface.yaml. And in here, we'll just paste our existing one and we'll just clean this up. So we don't need these or any of this. Yep, don't need any of that. That's all we need. So now we will replace the 4R with 20. Let's see, create dash F on that one. Okay, now we'll copy that to VLAN 30 interface. Place our 20s with 30s this time. Copy it again to 40. Again to fifty. Create all those interfaces. Get okay. So yeah, VLAN 20 and 30 are now available. So let's see if these start to go to available now that that has worked. We might need to delete them and recreate them. But we'll wait for all the VLANs to be created. We'll see if it sorts itself out. If not, we'll delete and recreate all of the bridges. And at the same time, if we just log into that node, um, node wide. So we'll just log into that node. Okay, so all of our VLAN interfaces are now available. I don't think the bridges are going to work though, so we might just delete them. 
So we'll delay 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And we'll just recreate those ones. Bridge, VLAN. Okay, so we'll create those policies. Hmm, do you worry about this one? Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, it's because it's already created. So get an NCP now. All right, let's see how they go now. We'll just add an NCE as well. Okay, so they're starting to become available. So that's cool. We're still progressing on bridge for VLAN 30, but we're looking pretty good at the moment. So once they become available, then we will configure our node uh, network attachments that we can then provide to the VMs. Uh, that top one is failing because in the new server that I replaced, uh, ENO3 isn't coming up for some reason. So I'm just bridging EN, ENS2 on all of these, or ENO2, sorry, on all of these nodes and not the bond. I'll have to come back to the bonding. So we're almost done. We can almost go and create our node network attach. Our node network attachments. So we want to look at, for example, this attachment definition for VLAN 1. So in here, we just basically want to replicate this, except we're going to replace the ones with the bridges that we've created. So it'll be BR20, 30, 40, 50, blah, 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 blah. So if we look at our um, network attachment definitions here, we can see that we've got VLAN 1, VLAN 4, and the trunk bridge. So if we have a look at this one, for example, we can see here we're not actually doing any VLAN tagging within this bridge now because we're just bridging a VLAN tag interface already. So this is what we want to create now. So we can copy that or we can just find that file here. So we just do AG VLAN 4. I think I've been pretty bad with maintaining these here, so I might not have it. Uh, network attachment def. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's copy it from here. So we'll just copy all of this. Go back to our terminal and we'll start creating them from scratch. So this will be a network attachment definition for VLAN 20.yaml. So we'll paste that in. Now we just want to delete the things that are not relevant to us here. So we can delete them. We can delete all of this again, all the manage fields, generation, creation. think that will actually be fine. So then we want to go through again and just replace our 4 with 20. Uh, that looks like it's highlighting all the right things. Yep. And then we'll do IC create on that one. Create dash F on that one. And we'll just check our console here. So that looks like it has become available, so that is good. So we will copy that file and do exactly the same thing that we've been doing here. So VLAN 20 to VLAN 30, 40, 50, 60, and then we'll do sed minus i, replace the 20 with 30, in this one, replace the 30 with 40 in this one, so on and so forth. And then OC, so we'll do ls grep nad. And then for I in that command, do OC create dash F, do with I, done. 
Okay, so we have created our network attachment definitions now. We can see them all here. Something wrong with VLAN 1 by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, I think it's working anyway, so I think we're good. So what we want to do now is we want to shut down our VMs and then we're going to add these in. And we want to be pretty careful about how we add them in because we need to make sure they're the same order if we want to use the same uh, network configuration file. So we'll just power off these two because the director node doesn't need those interfaces. So we'll stop our compute and controller node, add in these networks, and then we're going to try and run a deployment and see how it goes. Okay, so these are stopped, so we can go to network interfaces. Now we have NIC0, that is our OpenShift network. We don't need it. It could be removed if we wanted to. I'm just leaving it because you'll have it by default if you go creating VMs here. Um, NIC1, that's going to be our control plane network, so we'll just leave that on VLAN1. NIC2 and 3 at the moment are our external interfaces, so we'll leave that. So to make our lives easier, let's look at the network config file. So we're going to our bare metal end file. This is the one we're using. So we don't want to use that anymore. We want to actually just go into this directory and see what other options we have. So we can see we have the multiple NICs with VLANs there. Uh, we have multiple NICs DVR. We have multiple NICs J2. That sounds like it suits our use case. So let's have a look at that file. So in here, we are going to loop through the interfaces starting at interface one. Okay, yeah, so we start at interface one. So this one will not be our control plane NIC. So we're gonna to need to make a change to this. So let's just go ahead and do that now. So type interface, the name will be NIC1. We want def route to be false and use DHCP true. So the next thing we want, so this one here is actually going to be NIC2 now, so that's fine. So we go NIC1 will be OpenShift, NIC2 will be our control plane. Now, here we're going to loop through networks and provided they aren't the external or the tenant network, we're going to go ahead and create the IP address by looking up which network it is and looking up any static routes that we've configured for it. If external bridge is in the role tags, then we'll create an OVS bridge called uh, BRX, which is what this one will be. Otherwise, we're going to call it BR whatever the network name is, so we'll have a BR tenant here. And then we will add in our interfaces to the bridge. So I think this is fine. The only thing we want to do is create a bond for our external network. So I might end up needing to statically render these files, but I think what we want to do from the OpenShift side is just remove these two these two NICs for now. So let's delete them. And now in order, we're going to go through and add in these these networks for in, in the order they get created in the OS net config. So let's go ahead and add, a, add in our networks now. We're going to add a network interface. This will be NIC2. It'll be the Vert.io model, and we're going to add in VLAN20. Type will be bridge, it's not SRIV, so we add that one. Then we want to add NIC3, will be VLAN30. NIC4, VLAN40, and so on and so forth. We'll just do this for both of our, our VMs. Now, finally, we will add back in our VLAN 4, which will be our external. And I'm going to add two of those interfaces so that we can just configure a, a bond there. It, there's no real reason to do it because it needs to be active backup because of the way I'm using these bridges. Obviously, I can't do LACP when, it, when there's no switch to participate in LACP. But just for the purposes of showing an example of how to do that with our network configs, I'm going to configure those bonds. 
So we'll do exactly the same thing for our compute node. Okay, so we've done the controller, so now we'll do the compute node. So add network interface. This one will be NIC2 and it will be VLAN 20, 30, 40, so on and so forth. And again, we get to the end and we'll add in two VLAN 4s. Okay. So, let's power these back on. Okay, so let's just explore what happens if we edit that bare metal end file. And instead of pointing to the bond VLANs, we point to the multi nix one, which was... So we'll just make sure we get the correct path for that. So nick configs and then multiple nicks. So we'll go back here. So nick configs will delete this, add in multiple nicks, and the same for this one. Nicks. So now we'll do the node provision with the dash dash network config flag and at the same time we will hit admin into one of these nodes and we'll just see what happens looks like, looks like they aren't started back up yet so we might fail we'll check the compute Compute's back up and running. So we can log in here. So they're still configured from the previous run. Hmm, this controller is taking a very long time to start back up. Yeah, so that's failed because it can't get to the controller. We need that controller back up before we can run that command. We can still log into our compute nodes, that's good. And our controller has just come up now. So let's rerun that command now. So we'll, we'll log in on that console as well, just in case it breaks networking and then we can have a look at what's been rendered in the OSNet config file because sometimes it can be hard to brain pass these Ginger 2 files. Sometimes you just need to get it rendered, see what it actually looks like and then iterate on your configuration from there. So I have a console ready to go on that VM in case this doesn't work or in case something breaks. We'll let that run and we will come back when it's finished. Okay, so we, we failed there. So let's see why we failed. If we just scroll back up in our TMUX session. Uh, it looks like it might be a templating issue. I might have done something wrong here. And so I find these easier to read if you just copy it like this, go into VI, paste it, and then just re replace all of the new lines with actual new lines. So backslash backslash n so that we catch all the backslash n's there, forward slash backslash r for return carriage, and then g. So now that has you know formatted it a bit nicer for us. So bool object is not iterable. What on earth are we trying to iterate? It's a bool. For network in roll networks. B 
whole object is not iterable. What is it trying to iterate? We're just tidying this up a little bit so it's easier to read. Backslash n. So look for the for loops because I assume it's for looping. Yeah, so I guess it has to be this one. So let's go check out our role networks variable. Um, no, we don't need to save it actually. So this will be back in our variables file, which I think we went into here. No. Search for role networks. So that looks fine. Role network. So let's check this network skip config. Nope, so there's nothing there. Okay, so because there's nothing in there, let's just simplify this a little bit and that might help us get to the bottom of it. So we'll just do for network in role networks. Let's see if we still get the same problem there when we run that. Uh, yep. So we'll try again and we'll see if we get the same error there. Let's just go back over here. And we'll open up that default file in user share ansible. So it's in new share ansible roles triple O OS triple O network config templates multiple nicks multiple nicks dot j2. You know what? This might actually be fixed. Ah uh, this this might actually be fixed. Maybe this is all we needed, actually. Before we get too carried away, let's just try that, actually. So we'll go back over here. We'll save this for now. We'll edit our bare metal environment file. And we'll just change this to user share ansible roles, triple O network, config, templates, multiple nix, multiple nix.j2. Let's just try that and see if that eliminates that problem. Just do the same down here. So we're still going to need to make modifications to it, but let's just see if the problem was that I wasn't using an up-to-date version of everything. So we'll close this, we don't need this anymore. Close that, we don't need that anymore. So just like in, in the first video where I spoke about making minimal changes, this is another instance. This is another instance where I've copied something from the defaults and I've added it to a local directory, but then I haven't kept that up to date with the with the changes that come from upstream. So what can happen in that case is as we saw, my network configuration failed because it was trying to iterate over some first the bool. The second time I had an issue with role tags, and then when I compare the file I have locally to the compile that to the file that 
exists in the Ansible role, in AAA Ansible, they're different. So the one in AAA Ansible might actually work and my local one is the, is the problem and that's what we're about to find out. If that's the case, then we can make a copy of the new one and add in our bond for our external network and then we can just rerun the provision. Okay, so we're still getting role tags is undefined, but did that only fail on the compute? That appears to have only failed on the compute. That is interesting. So we can still log into it because it didn't render it, so that's fine. So let's log into our controller and see what that looks like. We can still get into our controller, that's great. Uh, so we have to make it a... And so we still have all the VLANs which we don't want. That is incorrect. So let's have a look at OSNet config, config YAML. So this has indeed changed here at least. So let's do OSNet. How has it? Yeah, it's changed there. It's not using VLAN. So let's do OSNet config dash C. Maybe because it failed, it never actually run this. I've lost connectivity, but let's go back to our console here and see what that actually did. Ah, oh, okay, so the problem here is that we don't have that um, OpenShift network, so it has put the network config on the very first interface. So that's what we need to fix in this case. So we will just vi OS so we basically just want to copy this actually, paste it in here. These delete all of this, delete this. We'll set this to true now. Set def route to false. False, and that will be Nick one. This will be Nick two, three, four, five. Six, and finally, this one will be Nick seven. Let's rerun that again. Okay, now let's see what our network config looks like. That is better, so can we SSH? Actually, we're already back, so that has fixed it. So that is the change then that we need to make in our NIC config. So let's copy that new one. So we'll copy user share Ansible roles, triple O network config, templates, multiple NICs, multiple nix.j2 and we'll copy it into nick configs and override the existing one so then we can edit our bare metal end file and we can point back at that again so home stack templates nix Configs. 
And we'll double check that is the correct path. It does indeed appear to be. Or external bridging roll tag. So this roll tags is still causing me a, a bit of a headache here. But we need to go in here and do type interface name will be Nick One. Use DHCP will be uh, true. Def routes will be false. This will be Nick Two. Yeah, so I don't think this is going to work anyway because we're going to use this loop index and it's going to start from zero, I assume, because our loop starts here. So it'll start, yeah, zero, so it'll be Nick. Maybe we just do, let's just do loop index plus two and see if that, see what that does. So we still have this issue with roll tags, but I really, I really just want to see if that is the solution to the problem before I go too far into it. So let's try that again, see if our controller renders that file correctly. Oh, I did it from over here. Okay, so again, it only failed on compute, so that is good. Let's go back here, log back into our controller. Cat, let's see, let's submit. If we got yellow, let's see how it's. Yeah, so this this looks better, and obviously it is better. Well, let's let's just run osnet config dash c on that file dash vvv let's just run it because i don't think it actually executes if it fails on the compute node so we'll see if we lose connectivity again but i think this looks better yeah we didn't lose connectivity this time ipoa and now we see we have yeah all of our networks are just flat networks now so that that is great Let's try and ping our gateway between 0254 with BREX. Oh, it is capital I. Mm, so that doesn't work though. So that's going to be a problem later down the line. So we need to look into that. So ETH5. ETH5. That is incorrect. It should be ETH six that is in yeah, so it's not iterating correctly then. Because ETH six should be in that if I do OBS VS ETL show. So we'll do OBS VS ETL Dell port BRX ETH five and we will add port ETH six. And then try and ping again. Ping dash i b i x one seven two twenty zero two by four. Still not working. So let's get the MAC address of ETH six then. With 13, we'll go back here. Network interfaces. Ah, oh. no. So, so ETH6 is actually on VLAN 60. So we want we want this interface. Is the one we want. So let's go back, find out where that is. IP link. Can I do that? No. IP link. So this 14 one, so ETH7, yeah, yeah, no, that, that makes sense. ETH7 and ETH8 are the ones we want to bond. So we'll Dell port again. 
ETH6, and we'll add port ETH7, and then we'll try and ping. Okay, so that does work. So you know what, let's, let's go back and let's just manually create that, that network config file, because I feel like that's going to be the path of least resistance here. So we will vi nit configs multiple nits.j2, and we're just going to delete all of this, all this crap. Just get rid of all of it. Now, let's copy this interface to start with. And we'll make some modifications here. So Nick 2 is fine for that one, Nick 3 here. And we need to know uh, which interface it's going to use for which network. So let's open up some different screens here. We'll just VI that file. We want to get some of this automatic goodness out of here. So for example, uh, this. So where we look up the IP addresses, we want that automation still. Um, so, so we'll do look up. That's fine. And then network. Yeah, no, it's lower. I think the first one will be internal API. We'll check that in a minute, but we'll just put it in there for now. Oh, API. And we want the CIDR for this lookup because we got the IP address earlier, so it's CIDR. And then close our lookup, close our variable. And this one here will need to be internal API as well. Internal API. And let's just get our OS you know, config dash i. Make sure our mappings. So uh, Nick Nick nine maps to ETH eight. So Nick eight and Nick nine are the ones we want in that bond. Right. So okay. So that's cool. That's our first one, and we. We can look up MTU as well, it's still the MTU automatic goodness. Um, routes, yeah, we'll steal the routes as well. Just to save us doing some of the work. Okay, now we'll just copy this. Yank, paste. This one will be in Nick 4. Okay, so now we basically just want to get our networks in order of VLAN. So we'll have a look in our network data file. So the first one we did internal API is VLAN 20. So that's our first interface that we added on the nodes. So VLAN 30 is the next one we want, which is our storage network. So we go down here, we're going to look up networks lower will be storage. So like that, and we're looking up network flow for storage on the host routes. Uh, here, instead of internal API, we want storage. Okay, so that is that done. So now we need to add in Nick 5, uh, which will be VLAN 40. Now, this one's a bit interesting because this one only applies to our controller. So let's add a variable here for if network enroll networks. Uh, no, if. Storage MGMT in role networks. And then all of these will be storage MGMT. 
So we'll just type this storage MGMT. Paste. 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 And then we'll close that if statement. Just and if. Because we only want that to apply to the controller node. Now, did I leave a variable up here somewhere? No worries, no worries. Storage, storage. Channel API, channel API, channel API, channel API, storage, 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 storage. And then if the storage management network is in our role networks, then we will add it to NIC5. Now the NIC numbering isn't going to change even if we don't apply that to our compute node. So the NIC numbering can stay the same. We want to copy this again though. And we want to paste it here. So this one will be now NIC6. Okay, now NIC6. So we're going back over here and we're looking for VLAN 50 now. Which is our tenant network. So we can come back over here. So this one will be tenant. 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 Okay, so that's our tenant network done. Now seven. So that was fifty. Now we want sixty. What's feeling sixty? Feeling sixty is our management network. Why do I even have a management network? Is probably my question. Okay, whatever. It can we can keep the management network. Um, so we'll just change this on to management. Management. Okay, so we've added the management network. Now we want to paste again. This will be Nick eight now. Okay, so now we're starting the interfaces for our bridge now. There was two other things in the default one. We don't just put the tenant network directly on an interface, we actually create BR tenant. So maybe we want to do the same here. Let's just do OBS bridge. Um, over this side we'll open back up that NIC config file. See how it does it. So name will be BR tenant. Then we need a members section under this. So we need to do members type interface name will be Nick six MTU will be just this variable again. Use DHCP will be false. Okay, so we've just copied that from this section down here. Primary. True. Okay. And the same here for NIC 8, which will be our external network. So we can do to neutron physical bridge name. Name, oh, actually, what have I done? I need to come down. Name, 
this will be OBS bridge as well. Yep, and then we just need this basically this whole members section again, and we just change the interface and the network we're looking up on. So we'll copy that, come down here, oh, paste it. So this will be Nick 8 now. And we're looking up the external network this time. So external. The same for all of these, these all need to be external, external. External. Okay, so let's just do it like that for now, see if that works, and then we can come back and look at the bond. Or maybe we'll look at the bond next time, we'll just get a deployment happening this time, because that's more exciting. So, that, oh no, hold on, hold on. What have I done? That is incorrect. Ah, because I need the members part, so down here and do members. Okay, that looks right, I think. I think that is good. So let's make sure that both of our nodes point to this file now. So we'll uh, just copy that line. Paste, get that one. Okay, let's do it again. Revision. Let's see how that goes this time. If that works, we'll do a deployment and maybe we'll look at doing the bond next time because I think this might be getting boring. Ah, okay, so it failed for both, and I believe that is because I didn't quote all of those variables in there. So, for example, so basically we need to go through and replace any internal API with quoted internal API. Um, G. Okay, and we need to do the same for all of them. Tenant, tenant. storage management. Oh shit. Okay. Oversight. So we need to quote the whole storage management. Okay, I think that's good. Tenant. We need to do management. Okay, the last thing I thought about is we want this one to be the default route. So for here, on this one, we want def route. True. Okay, let's try again. Out again. Let's just do the VI trick again here.
Ah, uh, yeah, so the problem, the problem is that other storage management we used for the if statement. So now if statement here needed to be like this. Okay, so this time it has rendered them correctly, but it looks like we've failed to run on one of the nodes. So we failed to run on our compute node. So our controller, again, our controller looks great. Just make sure we can still ping. We can still ping gateway, that's perfect. So let's go to our compute node if we can, we can. Now, it uh, looks like it's configured properly. Let's just run OS net config here. It's fine to me. So we'll ping IBRX 172.20.0.254. This one works as well. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just see if we can ping on random networks, for example. So this one, and we will go to our controller and try to ping that IP. Okay, that works. So it looks like connectivity between these nodes on all networks is working. Although that provision did fail, I'm not... Why did it fail? Let's have a look. OSRI, invalid argument. hundred percent sure but you know what we're gonna run a deployment now so let's have a look at our deploy command so this is our deploy command we moved everything to our answers file let's check our answers file because what we want to do is make sure that those nit configs are defined correctly in our uh, bare metal deployed file We've done a lot of changing there, so we just want to make sure we've got the right template specified here. Uh, no, where is it? So in here, we just want to change these to here to point to the new template that we've created. So that one. Now this isn't going to be too relevant unless you did network config update because by default the deployment won't change that network configuration unless you explicitly tell it to. So we shouldn't have a problem now just running this deployment. The networking at least works so that is a like the biggest hurdle that we're likely to encounter unless there's something RHEL 9 related, or CentOS 9 in this case related, that is going to cause problems for me. So we're just going to run the deployment. We will actually, I need to remove, we don't want this compute Dell role anymore. It's just taking up space and making noise. So let's get rid of this. We we'll get rid of that. And because we don't have a persistent heat stack, it doesn't matter that I did that. We're, we're just going to recreate it with the with the new roles data file. You can have some problems in that we need to shut down the ephemeral heat stack. So once it starts the ephemeral heat part of you, control C, depending on where you do it, it might not clean it up properly. I know there's been some patches added with the finally statement to clean it up, but that's just one thing to be aware of if you control C if you press Control c during this process, um, you know, you might have an issue the next time you run it saying that the ephemeral heat pod is already running, in which case you would need to clean it up manually. But I think we're handling that largely in triple O client now and it shouldn't become a problem.
Okay, so we failed here with control triple O controller CA deployment, so you could not locate file in lookup. Okay, and I think I might know why. So we got to overcloud deploy overcloud can we download overcloud and then controller. So it's looking for triple O controller, but the controller is actually called overcloud controller zero. And then in overcloud controller zero, I have that CA deployment file. So we need to figure out how it determines, like where it's getting this from. So what we can do is go find this task. So we'll try looking in here first. So any grab minus R, just look that up. Okay, so it's in the deployments YAML. So the point channel uh, lookup deployment UUID, that's what it was, wasn't it? Lookup deployment UUID. So this one here. So we're looking up file triple O role name, Ansible fax host name. Okay, so that that's the problem. The problem is that I haven't set the host name on these nodes to match the schema that I've defined in my deployment file. So rather than change that in our schema, I'm going to change it on each of the overcloud nodes. So this one will be sudo hostname ctl uh, set hostname overcloud controller zero and we'll do dash dash transient so admin sudo sudo admin okay so that's overcloud controller zero now we'll just do the same on our compute node so yes compute transient sudo sudo admin okay uh, no, that is incorrect. That is incorrect. It needs to be overcloud compute zero. Overcloud compute zero. Right, now that should match what we have in here, for example. So in our LS compute, overcloud compute zero. That is perfect. That's what we want. So we're going to rerun just the Ansible portion of this. So we go back a directory. We have this Ansible playbook command here. Command, so we'll just remove the V's from here. I don't really want the debug at the moment, I just want to see how fast it is. Okay, so our deployment completed and just had one issue with the Octavia deployment. So if we have a, have a look now, open stack endpoint list. Oh, so the first thing we want to do is export OS cloud equals overcloud, and then open stack endpoint list. We can see there that we now have all of our endpoints up and running. So our Octavia network's been created. I don't think I was using M4 yet, so I don't have an M4 image. So we're all good there now. The overcloud has successfully deployed. So. Um, in this video, it's been a pretty long one, but we looked at reconfiguring the um, OpenShift network so that we could have the VLANs on each interface. Then we bridged each of those VLANs and we attached them to our VMs. From there, we went and had a look at the multi-mix. Um, from there, we went and had a look at the multi-mix J2 template for the network config, and we made some modifications to suit our requirements. We didn't we didn't configure the the bond just yet. We'll do that in an upcoming video because I thought it'd be more interesting to see an actual overcloud deployment. So in upcoming videos, we'll take a look at configuring the bond for those external networks. And we're also going to look at using the Mitogen project to try and speed up some of our deployments. So I've had some success doing that on the undercloud deployment and I need to take a look at how we can implement that in the overcloud environment. So there will be upcoming videos. So if you have any questions about this one, network configurations, overcloud deployment, Keep in mind that I'm doing this all on um, CentOS 9, so we can, you see, 
Red Hat release. We are using CentOS 9 stream for our overcloud node. So if you have any questions around um, you know, deploying Triple O on CentOS 9 or anything else we've covered in this video, I'm happy to answer them in the questions below.